search for classic cars this time has brought us all the way to the UP of Michigan, where we snagged up this 1964 Ford Galaxy two-door flavor. It's supposed to have a straight six and a manual transmission, but of course, it doesn't run, and it's been off the road for many years. So guys, I'm gonna see if I can get it fired up and back on the road again. First, let's walk around it, see what we bought. Guy always likes to start in the trunk, because if you find engine parts or things of that nature, then you kind of can brace yourself for what you're about to get into. Okay, oh wow, we got a lot of stuff. Sweet. Poverty caps. Shift linkages. Um, so basically the entire car is in the trunk. Ooh, what's this? Ring box. Will you marry me? <laughs> Hello! I wonder what Reba McIntyre is doing today. There we go. Maybe. Uh, okay. It's an interior of the car. That's blue. Kind of like a baked potato full of warm raisins. It's confusing, but not bad, actually. Ooh, we got ignition sticks. Maybe not. Wow, those actually help. There's mouse stuff everywhere in here. That must have been mama's house. We got fuzzy dice already customized. So yeah, I mean, we got a base here to work off of. Let's see what we got going under the hood. Oh, it's also just missing everything, probably in the back seat or the trunk. All right, yeah, there we go. Straight six. So this is gonna be the 223, and I know that because this is the only straight six available in the Galaxy up until 64. It was the mileage maker. It made fuel mileage, but no horsepower. It looks like we got completed, so I mean, fuel make it happeners here, intake, exhaust is on it. Let's see if it turns over, just gonna grab the fan. Yep, but it's also turning the starter, which is jammed into the flywheel. Oh, that's fantastic. The block is JB welded. So what happened there, I can guarantee it, is it wasn't properly winterized, wasn't enough antifreeze in it, so it froze. Expanded, cracked the block. You can see it's still leaking rust water and stuff like that. So we're gonna have to get this thing fired up as quickly as possible and get some water in it see how bad it leaks before we move forward with anything, because it doesn't make sense to put time and money into this engine if, you know, there's a window on the side of it. So there's about a 94.83% chance that this engine is just shot, but I'm gonna try to get it running anyway because I wanna test the transmission, the clutch, and maybe we could crawl it into the shop if we're gonna dig into this thing deeper. Gonna need spark, fuel, and hopefully it has compression already. So I gotta add an ignition coil. I actually found the bracketry in the trunk back there. I'm gonna hot wire the coil for now because I have no key. <laughs> we got spark. So I think the guys got her to where we could see if this is gonna run for a few seconds anyway. I'm gonna dump this in here. This is a, a chainsaw fuel mix from the guys here. And that, that should work fine. <laughs> it sounds pretty good. There you go. 32 years alive and running, except the block is still cracked. That's great. It's not smoking that bad. If you're making those bracelets in grade school, you can learn a few things here. Oh, yeah. So right now I'm trying to hook up a temporary fuel system 
We don't want to pull what's in the tank. We don't know what's in there. Sounds terrible. Perfect. So we have an Autolite 1100 fuel make it happener in here. What I'm doing here is basically modifying the accelerator pump, which you can see is clearly shot. And I cut the bottom out of a coffee cup because this has a little bit of wax on it. And I'm gonna make a gasket to go on this so it's not gonna be leaking all over the exhaust manifold, therefore giving us another 3.9% chance of making it the 50 yards into the shop. So I guess this is clutch check right now. So I'm gonna to try to crawl the car forward here just a little bit. Three of the four aired up. The drinker side rear is down. I'll pull it up here if I can, and then we'll figure out a tire situation. There we go. It doesn't have enough power. No brakes. That's weird. Come on, old girl. There we go. All right, got to open the hood and turn the key off. Successful first drive, 13.4 feet. Now, we're gonna go find a tire in this huge pile of tires over here. Up here in the UP, we got this 223 to fire off, but it's just not very happy. Got it running-ish. We also swapped on a used tire-ish that was more gooder than the bad one onto the original wheel. So once again, I'm ready to attempt to drive the vehicle into said shed. And Ford! Still stuck. One thing about living up north, you learn how to get unstuck. Oh yeah. Now I'm really stuck. Well, I think I've done her. I think I've done it real good. Okay, so I don't have any money. Can I pay you in gushers? That's no good. I'm running on four at best. There's no radio on here, I just realized. The Ford Galaxy is finally in the shed, but as we suspected, this 223 is in terrible shape. It is not running good at all. As luck would have it, we got on the face space on the line. We found another 223 way down in Ohio somewhere. The fan of Vice Grip Garage is actually driving that engine all the way up here for us. It's got a recently fresh rebuild, has like 3,000 miles on it or something like that. So I've got to thrash here quickly and get this engine out in preparation for that showing up. Just going to start taking off all the ignition, some of the peripheral stuff, the radiator, get the battery out, and hopefully get some chains in here and pulling on this thing pretty quick. I'm doing everything I did. <laughs> I've been waiting to do this all day. Ready. Well, I've almost got the 223 ready to pull out of the Galaxy here, and this is obviously a pretty sizable project, so I brought in some help. This is my buddy Andy here. Hey. Andy's not only a friend, but he's also a fabricator, but today we're pulling <laughs> engines. <laughs> yeah, you gotta start somewhere, and uh, let's get it moving. Well, I'll jack it up, and you can roll around on the ground and get wet. How's that? Perfect, yeah, perfect. I completely tricked Andy. I was like, hey, you can come put a roll cage in. He's like, yeah. Uh -huh. And then he told me Florida first. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere nice form. So the engine is pretty well ready to pull on the top side. Andy's got the drive shaft and the exhaust all the way. Oh, there goes the paint. We're gonna slide the cherry picker in, grab onto this little six cylinder, and try to pull the engine and transmission at the same time. 
That tail shaft is like three feet long, isn't it? It is definitely not short. You are clear. All right. Boom. Yeah. What a mess. So we're uh, trying to get all this peeling paint and stuff off. It's gonna look brand new, yeah? I mean, just getting down to some nice black. I'm gonna professionally spray this tonight and let it dry overnight. And by professionally, I mean. So now we got some kind of paint mud going on though. This is never gonna dry. We went ahead and sprayed down the engine bay here. We're gonna have to let this dry for quite a while, overnight actually. There's a lot of coats in this thing. And if all goes well, tomorrow morning, we're gonna have a different engine. We can start reassembly, so we'll see you then. Good morning from Frigid, Michigan, day two on our 1964 Galaxy here. Today, I got a donor engine showing up. I'm gonna prep that and get that ready to put in. Oh boy. Yeah, this thing is shot. Guy's got the three speed off. We're gonna reuse this, but I noticed while driving it into the shed yesterday, the clutch is shot. This thing is in terrible condition. There's pretty much no grooves left on the surface. And then the mating surfaces from sitting all those years is in really bad shape. Here, as well as the flywheel, I'm hoping the flywheel on the other engine is in better condition. And this one can just stay on this. All this is gonna go away. All right, so we got a whole kit of uh, pre-bent brake lines and just kinda gotta go through and figure out where they go. Well, here's our donor engine. It's a older 223. It's a 1959 out of a Ranchero. A uh, fan of Vice Grip Garage has spent 12 hours driving this up here to us, thankfully. It's complete, but ironically, the intake is all JB welded. Weird. But we have an answer for that. We want to pep this up anyway, so we're going to be putting a different intake, carburetor, and exhaust on it. First, the guy's going to clean this thing up with some brake cleaner, wire brushes. We're going to paint it, and we'll get it ready to put back into the car. Don't look too bad. So going back to our new clutch that's on the newish used to newer to us engine. The spline count is different from the transmission we were going to use, which is this guy right here. So this will not work with the new engine essentially because we don't have any other clutch options. So we're looking at this three speed with overdrive that came out of the Ranchero and we're gonna try to use this in the Galaxy now. It's longer, we're gonna have to shorten the drive shaft, and there's some other things going on. Right now we're trying to figure out, wouldn't it be cool to have a floor shifter? Because all of the shift linkage is wrong anyway for the yeah. column. Yeah. And uh, well, there's no instructions basically, so. Universal. We're just struggling pretty much. So, wait, you're the fabricator. This is like I your- I said we can cut and do whatever. <laughs> Anything is possible. Easy as one, two, three. Okay. bracket and the shifter mounted, that'll work. And then now it's just getting these rods to work. Got one down, we have this guy in the way, so that's probably put a big 
bend in this and clear that hopefully, and then we'll have all the gears and go from there. Ah, when your car is in pieces and doesn't run, it's important that it looks good. That way the old wife will let you continue to buy speed parts. So, we're gonna do a little old hot rod into this. Now, when I was in high school, you'd find these, but they're like Mickey Thompson's. Shadow them red and then sand them out, polish it. Woo! Man. So after a lot of fighting, this is now together. And now, everything shifts fine. Oh, oh no. What did I do? Oh, I got it out of neutral. What? How did that happen? Please tell me it broke during his demonstration it of did. It, how it works. Well, I mean, not, I don't even know what I did. <laughs> <sighs> Reverse, first, second. Or should have done that like three hours ago. So obviously we want to give our straight six a little bit more pep. And we're going to do that by throwing on a header here and some sort of custom exhaust. And then we're going to be putting on these really cool dual Weber's and Clifford intake. Should definitely give us more fuel, air, and well, exhaust flow. I just, when you pop a hood and you see this, there's just nothing better. So I've got the straight six back together. This little 223 looks great. We got really, really lucky on this thing. We paid only $500 for it. The guy said he had recently gone through it like two or 3,000 miles ago. So it should run pretty good. Hopefully, thing looks fantastic. Now we got to stab this three-speed back onto the engine and get it into the car once again. Okay. <laughs> so we got to do a lineage plus oh, yeah. forward edge. Ooh. <laughs> it's really heavy. Oh, wow. Did that just happen? One and done. That typically never happens. You gotta turn the output shaft and do all sorts of stuff. Hopefully that's a sign of things to come and this is just gonna slip right back in the car. There we go. Why did you have to build it eight miles away from the car? <laughs> so one of the challenges we're gonna have is this transmission is right, three and a half inches longer. We actually have a member of our production team flying across the state right now with the drive shaft to get it shortened. And then when that comes back, hopefully that slips right in. Let me get my body into some pinch points here really quick. Okay, right here. It's gonna ruin our PPG clear coat here. Is it possible to go up but down, is what I'm wondering. You push down, I go up. Okay. Ready? Oh. Sure. Uh -huh. Seems like we're doing this wrong. I hear bending, keep going. Okay, hold on. I think I just compressed my spine. Ready? Yep. Is it in? Does that set in? Yeah. A little bit of a fight, but we got the engine and transmission in. That's looking good. <laughs> 